Hi everybody, Brian Balrick with Roland Digital Group in Irvine, California. Here again for a follow-up video. Uh, this one actually is an adjunct to the previous video about spot color uh, within VersaWorks. And I wanted to take a moment to give you the basics of designing with the spot colors, which we didn't cover in the previous video. The previous video was really just a glossary topic of the application of why you why do we want to look at these spot color abilities within VersaWorks and how they get used. So now I just want to show you a quick example of application of taking a design that you have and using colors within this Roland spot color library to lock the color values into place so that now this job has been modified, edited, it uses Roland spot colors that now as long as you have uh, the same printer and the same material loaded uh, with the same settings in the rip that you'll get reproducible color every time and your clients will be very happy so let's take a look I just got a very simple logo set up here uh, not too much going on color wise but again some clients are very critical they just need the color that they need and they will they will need very specific color so let's take a look um, we've got this goldenrod here, a little bit of gray going on in this blue. So, as we discussed in the previous video, let's assume that you've already got your shop set up, you've got specific printers, and you've produced the Roland Spot Color Library out of VersaWorks on the materials that you use most often, the ones that you would use for this project. So, what we need now is you, you've already made the client happy. He's looked at your color charts and you've picked specific colors for this job, right? Great. Now the time comes for you to take his job, his, his uh, design work, and actually utilize the Roland spot colors in this design. So let's take a look. So, first thing we're going to need to do is I'm going to click on this golden rod, and I'm actually going to go up here to select same fill color. So basically everything that's that kind of a golden color is, is now selected. Go over here, and I'm going to click on the color palette on the right side, you'll see. And with that uh, fill color selected, you see it's just a collection of CMYK color. Um, nothing too special. And the problem is if, if we take this job as it is and print it out, however we set the rip up, whatever modifications we make, what, whatever rendering intent, whatever quality setting we choose, all changes color. So your options are either to try, basically hit and miss. You could try to reproduce it. You can try to tweak. You could try to do lots of things to try and get the right color. But remember, we've got the Roland Spot Color Library working for us. So we've already kind of nailed it. We've looked at the chart. We found the color that works. Now we just need to fill this object with the color that the client approved. So let's go ahead and change that. So right now, again, it's still sitting as CMYK. We need to make that a Roland Spot Color. So Let's move down here to swatch, which is the second or third one down on the right. You see our swatch open. And we're going to click on the little three parallel lines here. And we're going to go all the way down to open swatch library. You can see I've actually got a pointer here that shows the rolling color system libraries was previously loaded before this. But I'm just going to go ahead and pretend for yourself that you haven't done that. So it won't be there. And what you'll have to click is other library. So once we do that, it's going to ask us where is this special library of color that uh, we need. So I want you to navigate to your typically Roland VersaWorks has been loaded on your C drive. And we're going to find it under program files. And I've just double clicked to open that up. And we'll move down here and we'll see VersaWorks. Double click your VersaWorks folder. And sure enough, third folder down you're going to see a folder called Swatch. Let's go ahead and double click that. We've got these swatch libraries for Corel Droplets, the one we're going to use, the one for Illustrator. So let's go ahead and go in there. And here we go. Uh, depending on which chart it was that your client looked through and approved the color, this is the chart you would load. You can see here quite a variety of ones that we have. I'm just going to go straight to the Roland Color System Library. Again, if that was the, the main chart. That's the one with all of the different colors on it. So let's go ahead and open that one up. I just double clicked on it and it brings it into the um, Illustrator window here. I'm going to grow it up a little bit. And this is pretty much a standard view for the uh, color library system here. So it starts off at the very top 
with P, I'm sorry, um, RBWBK01A. Uh, and then moving across, we're going to go all the way up to RBK, uh, RVWBK21A, and then there's 22A. Um, and it, again, all of these colors represent the chip chart that you already produced. This is the lock-in. This is where you're looking on the chart that you produced and you found that for this client, it is this golden color down in, in the uh, folder here, or here we are, RVWPR48J. That's the, cl the color the client really liked and he thought would be perfect for this job. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on it and you'll notice right away. Not a big shift in color what you're seeing on the screen, but it doesn't matter. Again, what you're seeing on the screen sometimes isn't a very good representation at all of what that chart looked like and what the Roland chart produces onto vinyl. Don't expect to see a, a design on your screen where you click on that color and it looks exactly like what you're expecting at the other end. Very different things that we're dealing with here. Just trust that as long as this is the color that the client liked, and you'll notice it got added. The moment I clicked on it, RBWPR48J got added to the swatch library. Again, that's the color. It's the one from the chart that the client really wanted for this particular job. And I can continue through and I can select this blue. And um, you can see that this one happens to be uh, defined as a Pantone color, which is fine. Our RIP will see it. It'll do its best to um, approximate a color that it can produce that's closest to that. Or if the client said, no, I really, really like, oh, let's say it was uh, this one here. It's a RVW ST24J. So when I click on that, there's the blue it updated and here it brought it into the RIP or into the uh, Illustrator swatch library. So you get the idea. You've got your chart of Roland designed color, the color that doesn't shift, the color that you don't have to worry about how to set the rip up. As long as the rip is set to the way that you produce the chart the first time and you use these colors within the design work and you bring it into that rip set up the same way for that same printer with that same media, you will get the same color that you got on your chip chart when the client approved it. And that is the basis of the system. Anyhow, I hope this has helped. Uh, really, this was just a quick run through of how to um, utilize these swatch libraries, bring them into Illustrator or CorelDRAW, and draw the colors out and make sure you're grabbing the right color that matches the color from your chart. Hope it's helped, and I look forward to seeing you in another video. Thank you.